everybody. <laughs> I just fidget and touch my hair the whole time. That's kind of the MO of my lessons. I mean, the hair is just so different and it's so short that I'm just, I forget sometimes it's so short. Buckley, mommy's working now. Hey, welcome to free voice lessons with Melissa. We're gonna jump right in as we always do. All right, well, that's very loud, Buckley. That's very loud, Buckley. Are you complaining now? Everybody wants to see Buckley always. There's Buckley. Hey, Buck, you being a big fat whiner? Yes, he is. All right, everybody, we're gonna jump right in. I'm getting going with today's lesson. Last week, we talked about being sick and sick days. I've been talking about like environmental things and how we sort of deal with just the stuff that happens with our voice when we're not feeling good or, you know, we do get sick or we have something we have to do and our voice is just exhausted. And so I thought that the next topic I would talk about is the idea of understanding kind of the break in the voice, the part of the voice that feels awkward for a lot of people. It's different for each of us. Us. So all of our breaks are completely different based on kind of where our voice sits and how it functions It's sort of an awkward spot You know, we all have this point in our voice and and during studying you're learning to smooth this over But we call it sort of the awkward spot in the voice. It's that part. It's right on your break It feels like you can't go any higher on a belt and then it just switches to falsetto. So it's like e like I don't know how to go up there anymore and so I can't belt it anymore and so now I'm switching into my higher range of my voice. You know, we would we would consider that to be the part of the voice between our chest voice and our falsetto. It's our passaggio. It's our mid-range, right? It's that mid-range. A lot of people in musical theater land call it our mix. It's that mid-range between the two. It's a place where you can really learn to balance the pressure, but it's sort of strange, right? It's such a strange part of the voice to learn to, to maneuver because you're actually having to train your vocal cords to maintain a position without panicking and without allowing other muscles to kind of come in and try to help that process, right? Um, so we are literally trying to maintain pressure in that mix, in that mid part of our voice that feels a little bit different. Now the other part of this is that when we go into a true mix and when we are singing up in that brighter mid range of our voice, we aren't using as much air. It's a much more specific position. We're not really needing as much air and so I think that's an interesting thing. When people go to belt high or you know, musical theater contemporary like Legally Blonde, like oh got you guys you don't really need to be full belt in in full volume because it's sort of sitting in that mixy talky mid-range right and so I actually don't need as much air so if I'm if I'm sort of like you know oh my god oh my god you like I'm, I'm coming at it so hard when the reality is if I really think of speaking and I really think of loosening a lot of that tension, a lot of that, you know, energy so that I'm not, I'm not coming at it volume focused. I'm coming at it more energy focused. It's actually more energy based, I think, than it is volume based. And I think that's where we sort of go wrong is people tend to just go for volume. I'm just going to push through it as opposed to understanding like, oh my God, like I, I actually just need my breath and my energy up here if I need to do those words. I don't want to, oh my God at it from there and that is a problem yes because it's not helping me approach the right way my mix range is sort of a Disney like range it's that mid passaggio range is almost like I'm a Disney princess I need to find that balance of pressure and then I can learn to maneuver from there I can make that bigger smaller based on what I need from the song but that's kind of where our break is for a lot of women especially it's different for men men and men and women are different in terms of where their voices sit and where that break sits and it also depends on whether you are a baritone or an, a tenor or an alto or a high soprano it's gonna be different for all of us but we've all got that point where it feels like it doesn't quite connect the same way and we don't have the same power know that that is a mental thing more than anything we have to untrain certain reactions so that we can learn to sit and be okay in certain positions without creating extra work if that makes sense that's why we crack that's why we hear it when we have that thing happen where we sort of crack in a position because we're not maintaining that position and so therefore the cords aren't holding that position because either they're being pushed or there's not enough air. Does it make sense? So that's also kind of tough. But a crack, similar to like a, if I yodel, yodel a, it's like, yodel a, 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 those changes, 
it's kind of a strange thing, but those little movements are actually my chords switching the position that they're holding, right? So if I crack, if I go to hit a note and then I crack, what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that the breath was moving and then for some reason those vocal cords are not maintaining that position. To me, as a teacher, when I see that happen, to me that immediately I'm like, okay, so what's happening with your breath? There's something not moving. There's something not actually maintaining the position of pressure. We need the pressure, right? If we've watched any of the other lessons we've done, we've talked a lot about pressure. So understanding your break and playing with your break and exploring your break is really about learning to play with the pressure so that you can figure out how not to use the jaw to maintain a certain position. And I, we get more into that as we go. So we wanna smooth it over. We wanna focus on balancing the breath as we vocalize so that when we're down here or when we're right here or when we're up here, well, <clears throat> and allergies, when we go up higher, or when we go up here, or when we go down here, we shouldn't really have this massive change in volume just because we're changing positions within our voice. Just because I'm going higher doesn't mean all of a sudden I'm gonna be louder. It's a different position for the chords. They're stretching differently to get up there. So how do I then know, and it's not up here, by the way, it's all right in here, so nothing's above my head, is there? Nope, there's not. So really, it's that thing of understanding that if I need to go higher, I need to stretch and anchor certain things so that my body is not instinctively reaching up because there is nothing up there, right? That's the other thing about our mid-range. It's very awkward. It feels awkward. So therefore, if we start behaving awkwardly because it feels like something we can't control sometimes. So as you go through scales and as you vocalize, you learn to treat those moments and those positions in your voice differently so that you can retrain your muscles to not react strangely when we get there, but it's also a strength thing. I can't get better at it. I can't smooth that position over unless I've gone through it all the time. So a lot of singers will come to me and they'll say, I really need help with my belting. I'm like, great. So you need to regularly vocalize a certain way so that you are teaching your voice to maintain that position differently. But but then they don't do the work and then they don't know why they're able to not do it in six months. Well, it's because it's actually untraining what you were doing before and it's relearning to do it a different way so that you know the difference. I mean, that's the truth. We have to unlearn bad behavior and then relearn correct behavior that's gonna be a little bit lighter. Now, does that mean you have to take all your style away? No way. There's a lot of singers that are pop singers, this and that, and they learn a little bit more about technique and it makes their job a little bit easier, if that makes sense. Oh, and then the other thing about, you know, the mid-range and the kind of brighter part of your voice, learning to brighten in our mid-range of our voice. Here's the thing. What tends to happen is people go back in the jaw because they get scared, so they go back. So they're like, v v v v v v v It's this back and forth thing. v v v v v v v v v v v I don't want to v v v v Like I'm sort of, I call that donkey singing. When I'm like, hey y'all, hey y'all, like I'm changing positions based on where I think it's supposed to go. Problem with that is that I'm not actually thinking naturally. That's why I talk about singing a lot or speaking a lot because when we speak, we just sort of talk and we use our voice and we send it certain places and we have our diction and all that stuff, but we're not really thinking about it changing positions. But when we sing, a lot of people, especially when we're untrained, we tend to do that. We tend to switch positions. So all of a sudden we get to that mid range, we're like, V, 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 killing it. V, 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 and then it gets up a little higher. V, 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 and we start acting really weird. The thing you've got to realize as a singer who's practicing and running and exercise is that we should not be changing as we go. Meaning we should not be treating the notes as though they're drastically different. The reality is if we want to find balanced pressure, we have to repeat certain things and we have to maintain a certain position. So if I'm saying V, V on my upper register or mid or low should not be drastically different in terms of where I'm putting it. And I think that that is what a lot of teachers call speech level singing is this idea that we're learning to use our full range without changing the behavior drastically. Now, that will be different based on style. So if I'm singing pop, obviously that's gonna be a completely different thing, but I go back to musical 
theater a lot because people on musical theater stages are being taught to talk in certain scenarios because it is dialogue, right? So again, if I'm playing Glinda, you know, and if I'm at the end of the song of Popular and I say, and though you protest, you're disinterest, you know, whatever I'm saying, I don't want to be going, and though you protest, you're disinterest based on where the notes sit because that's not me naturally using my voice based on the emotional quality of what I'm saying or what I'm trying to deliver to the audience, right? So again, that that mid-range part of my voice, I don't want to cater to it in an awkward way. I want to use my diction. I want to use my words. I want to use my breath. So I'm going to overdo it for a second. And though you protest your disinterest, but I'm not interest. I just got to let it go. I got to use the R. I got to know what, what vowel I'm going to. We break it down and then we learn to vocalize through our full range so that we are not acting as though a certain part is awkward and strange and therefore, ugh, you know. No, you got to get in there. You got to get in there and navigate. You got to get in there and play. You got to get in there and experiment. You got to get in there and move some shit around and figure out why it ain't working, how you want it to work. Does it make sense? We don't learn by like straying from the parts of our voice that feel tough. We actually have to get in there. We have to figure out why it's not working. We have to play and we have to, you know, again, really pay attention to certain things, looking in a mirror and actually v, 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 paying attention to the fact that I'm not going v, 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 and, and having all these weird physical reactions because mentally my brain is telling me that part's awkward, that part's high, don't go up there. Oh, oh God, you're not gonna, you're gonna break it. You're gonna, you're gonna crack. You're gonna mess up. Who cares if you mess up? The only way you learn is by messing up. <laughs> you're never gonna learn how not to crack unless you work through why you're cracking, right? You gotta work through the awkward part or else it doesn't get better, yeah? Find your mask space, right? Find the brightness. Figure out how to start from that brightness so that you're not coming underneath all your notes, right? So I always suggest talking like a little kid. <laughs> little kids are so bright they really whine up there you know what I mean you can really find that other ways like if you hum we need that space we need it we need it in order to not treat our mid-range like a really awkward place in our voice it requires us to like find all that space up there and to use it <clears throat> my nose is like, please don't. And I'm like, sorry, gotta use it sometimes. Okay, so anyway, guys, I, I feel like I'm a little all over the place. I've actually had a really bad headache the last two days. <laughs> so I've been sneezing a lot and just, you know, it's just been a tough time to be a singer down here for me in LA. But again, we do what we gotta do. We neti pot, we steam, we steam. We do things for our voice to make it feel a little bit better than it does when it's not feeling great, right? But remember, Understanding the parts of your voice that don't feel super strong is about learning to play and experiment and try things differently. Learn to simplify. Learn not to be the loudest singer in the room. You know, learn to be somebody that actually can figure out the nuance of your voice and how it moves and how it changes positions and what it feels like <sighs> to use your breath and actually feel that moving as you speak and as you say words and as you communicate emotion. It's all connect. So I hope this makes sense. Everybody just have a great Wednesday and I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching. Spread the word, by the way. Remember all of these lessons, I edit them down. They are all on YouTube. So if there was a specific one you really liked, you have any friend who's a singer who wants to learn, you know, I would really love anybody to be able to come watching this. Air, I see what you said, David, uh, Seymour. Air capacity and using your jaw to resonate helps. Well, the interesting thing is that we don't actually, I mean, our jaw doesn't resonate, right? So nothing resonates in the jaw, right? The jaw is actually one of the main forms of tension in our voice for the most part. So we really want to relax the jaw so that the resonance can move, yeah? So we're, nothing is resonating in the jaw, if that makes sense. I do want to say that, you know, the space that we create within the mouth up here, here, you know, we have certain chambers within the body where we really feel the voice resonate, but relaxing the jaw so that the voice can move and resonate is key. David, I hope that makes sense. Audra, I love the way you explain everything. I'm so glad, Audra, thank you for watching. Still reckon you need to do some country. Well, 
I tell you what, M.D. Reed, I would love to do some country. I actually love some country. I grew up listening to a lot of country with my dad, so I do, I do love a little country music. Well, you know, I, I love it all. All right, guys, have a great rest of your Wednesday. I will see you guys all very soon. Bye.